Hi, I'm Jessica from Kembu, and I'm here today to talk about air pollution and its effects on your skin. Joining me is skincare expert and medical esthetician, Cassandra Binkson. She has a very popular YouTube channel where she explores all types of skincare issues, and she's been doing this for about 10 years, so she has lots of experience and expertise to share with us. Cassandra, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you for having me, Jessica. I think that talking about you know our body's health and well-being from our appearance to what happens on the inside to the environment is so important. Absolutely. Um, I mean, we all have heard about air pollution and its effects on your health, whether it's your lungs or your heart. But what about your skin? Um, yeah. There have been recent studies that show that uh, exposure to particle pollution and air pollution and um, have negative effects on your skin, like premature aging, hyperpigmentation, even inflammatory issues like eczema and atopic dermatitis. Um, Cassandra, you're based in San Francisco where there's been wildfires ongoing on and off for months. Um, have you seen a negative effect on your skin because of the air pollution caused by these fires? Yeah, so that's a great question, Jessica, that I'm glad that you know, we're discussing is a topic of conversation, but yes, especially living in San Francisco, it's like, there's basically like ash falling from the sky and it coats the lawn, it coats the cars. It, it reminds me of almost like what I envisioned Pompeii to have looked like. Um, wow. But it's true. The studies that you're talking about are relevant and there is more and more scientific data mounting every single day um, that points to evidence of pollution and the actual air quality, not only negatively impacting things like our lungs and sensitive groups, um, but also our skin. Um, you know, which some may say, oh, your appearance is trivial in comparison, you know, to your lung health, which is true, but um, it still matters. And I think that people should definitely be aware of what's going on and how to prevent it. Absolutely. And I think one way to sort of be informed and know how to take extra precaution is by checking your air quality on a daily basis. And there's lots of ways that you can do this. Um, the EPA's Air Now website um, is a great resource. And um, one other way that I use is called the Daily Breather. It's um, a free email service that we offer from Tembu. Um, and it sends you an email every morning with an air quality report for whatever locations you want to monitor. We actually pull that data directly from the EPA's Air Now, air Now website. So it's just a really easy way to quickly check it every morning without having to like find it on the, on the internet. Um, so I highly encourage everyone to sign up for it. Uh, there's a link below and uh, it's free. So check it out. My favorite price. <laughs> no, but um, I appreciate that, you know, kind of like I check the weather before I get dressed every morning, um, especially in like the times that we're living in, whether it's pollution from automobiles, whether it's wildfires, we have, you know, free radicals or damaging particles coming at us from all angles. Um, and being aware of that is extraordinarily important for our overall health and also for our beauty. Absolutely. Um, so you mentioned free radicals. Uh, those sound kind of cool. What are they? You know what? They do sound cool, but they're actually very destructive. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah. So free radicals are actually one of the main causes of damage to both our skin and other things inside of our body. And the way you can kind of think of them are, you know, everything in life is made up of matter and we can break those down into elements, atoms, etc. And you've heard of electrons. Well, what exactly are they? Um, they're very helpful. They're kind of building blocks to life in a sense. They and matter um, are building blocks to life. But if electrons are unpaired or if they're single, they're very unhappy. And the way I like to describe them is kind of like home wreckers. You're living at home, you know, in a, in a little, in a little atom, you're happy. You've got all your family members in there, these little particles, right? But someone comes knocking at the door, who's an electron and they're unpaired or they're single. And they're like, yo, that's a good looking human or that's a good looking particle. I want to date you. And everyone's like, um, well, this is kind of awkward. And if they come in there and, you know, they're trying to tear apart this family, um, this could actually cause damage. So it could tear apart these molecules, could tear apart the inside of your skin, the inside of your lungs, your endothelial tissue, um, you know, basically can cause a lot of damage. And this is something we want to prevent. Now, where do these free radicals come from? They're actually a natural process. You know, our body has to make energy from the things that we eat. Um, there is a process in which our body creates that energy. It's called ATP. Um, and 
And during that process, oxidative phosphorylation, free radicals are created. So unfortunately, we can't always get away from them, but we want less of them rather than more of them, especially when it comes to external factors. So what we create is intrinsic or inside, right? But then there's also extrinsic things like sun damage, things like pollution, mm -hmm. things like psychological stress, uh, even bad diets, all of these things can start attacking our body and creating more of these damaging free radicals or free radical oxygen species, um, you know, which then try to destroy and tear apart our cells and our bodies from the inside out. And um, obviously we want to try to mitigate that. We already produce our own free radicals. So it's like, okay, what can we do to stop the external ones? Um, and this is why, whether it's your skincare, whether it's your beauty or whether it's your diet, things like antioxidants are really important. I mean, we could mm -hmm. even think of the word, right? Like antioxidant, anti or not oxidant or free radical oxygen species. Oh. And these antioxidants, yeah, think of them as like, other singles that are super, super happy to like, you know, come down the driveway and wave at the, you know, free electron and the free radical oxygen species and be like, yo, I have an electron. Instead of tearing apart this family, date me. You seem like a cool person. We're both kind of wild, right? And these antioxidants have extra electrons that they can give. Um, in your diet, things like vitamins A, C, and E, uh, glutathione, these are really helpful. But even in your skincare, if you look for something like vitamin C, if you look for vitamin E, um, these can be extraordinarily helpful because they're taking away the opportunity for these free radical oxygen species to do damage. That makes so much sense. And, you know, I never knew that about antioxidants. It's a word you hear all the time. You know, it's a positive thing, but you don't really know, you know, where, where does that word come from? What does it mean? Um, so tell me a little bit more about these antioxidants. Like, where can you find them? Yeah, great question, Jessica. Well, first off, they're delicious. Um, we find them in a lot of foods and beverages, usually anything from fruits and vegetables, uh, berries mm -hmm. especially, even dried herbs and spices, cinnamon and clove actually have an extraordinarily high level of antioxidants. Um, and even red wine, everyone talks about red wine. Well, resveratrol is the antioxidant within red wine that is so helpful. And I think that I want to make sure that I'm quoting the data correctly, but I think that you need like 55 glasses of wine to get a substantial amount. <laughs> so I'd personally recommend getting it in a supplement from your doctor or, you know, in a skincare formulation, because then mm -hmm. you can apply it topically and help out your face. Um, but yeah, you know, in all of the things that we eat, usually if they are plant-based, they have some good antioxidants, they have some good polyphenols and fiber, right? Keeps everyone healthy mm -hmm. from the inside out. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, any excuse to have a glass of red wine, I'm, I'm down for, but maybe not 55. That might uh, be a little bit too much. Um, so, you know, what steps can people take on days when the air quality is bad to help protect their skin? Great question. So again, your skin is your body's largest organ. Mm -hmm. um, it fascinates me, right? It's part of your immune system and it's also part of your integumentary system. And think of it as like your body is a castle, right? And your skin is like the wall or the protector, the, you know, the protector that keeps everything in. And your skin has multiple layers. It also has an acid mantle. It's kind of like a, a liquidy barrier. And you can think of that as like the moat, right? And this protects you. It keeps you in and it keeps the bad stuff out. You know, our skin lets us touch and feel and have pressure and sensation and temperature sensation. Um, and what happens is that when these free radicals come along and start to do damage to the skin, as we discussed before, it can degrade collagen. They can kind of tear things up from the inside out. Um, there's another protein in your skin, elastin. It's what keeps your skin stretchy and flexible. And as we get older, that naturally degrades. But if we can prevent that from happening, that's even better. Um, and specifically when it comes to protecting your skin from pollution, there are these free radical oxygen species or these ROS, right? But there's also the actual physical particulates. And these can be extraordinarily damaging to skin. You have soot, you have chemicals um, floating through the air. And remember, chemicals can be good, chemicals can be bad. Everything is toxic at a certain dose. Um, but the biggest thing that you can do, I think that the most basic of skincare routines need just two steps, a really good cleanser to kind of remove all that grime off the day, um, and then a sunscreen. Sun is the number one damager of skin. The sun creates free radicals, uh, lots of free electrons, mm -hmm. and it actually damages DNA in the skin. So prevention is easier than treatment, but 
I like to have a little more fun with my skincare, especially as someone who's struggled with acne for most of my life. Um, you know, and if people have pigmentation, if they have scarring, if they have redness, sometimes we can add more treatment steps. And that's where things like toners or serums and moisturizers come in. And so what you should be looking for are definitely antioxidants, anything mm -hmm. that's going to kind of help refresh the skin. And usually good moisturizers, something that's going to protect the face. So in a good cleanser, what you should look for are either antioxidants, maybe a gel cleanser, something that's soothing. Oils are great as well. This really helps to strip off anything that was kind of grimy on the skin, whether it was actual pollution, particulates, etc. Really washes all that off. And then it lets your next products penetrate in deeper. And mm -hmm. um, you can look for things like vitamin C. A lot of people look at their labels and they say, oh my God, it says ascorbic acid. That sounds terrifying. That's actually vitamin C. Ascorbic oh. acid. Yeah, L ascorbic acid or citric acid. And so a lot of people see these names and they get a little bit scared. But something I always tell people on my YouTube channel is turn and learn your ingredients so that when yep. you see these big fancy names like resveratrol, you're like, oh, that's not scary. You know, that's from grapes or um, epigallic hydrogen 3 gallate, right? That sounds like a super toxic Whoa. radioactive <laughs> substance. It's actually found in green tea, right? And it's oh. super helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so when you take a green tea toner or a vitamin C serum and you go to apply that to your skin, know that you're applying some great antioxidants and start to learn those ingredients. You know, you could read medical papers, you could trust experts to share that information with you, um, you know, but start to get comfortable with some of the, the terms on there. And then lastly, if it's the morning, you need to apply sunscreen. Um, mm -hmm. Again, sun is the number one damager of skin. And whether it's scarring, whether it's little pieces of pigmentation or even redness, um, you know, the sun is the main aggravator and it's responsible for 95 to almost 99% of all of the things that we're trying to treat. Um, so sunscreen, it's important. And then it even creates kind of like a protective barrier. If you get maybe a thicker sunscreen, you know, it's like a physical barrier between you and whatever particles are out there. And I know that, you know, when I was younger, my mom would slather me up. I looked like a greasy turkey like with all this sunscreen, right? It was miserable. But thankfully, we have many more sunscreens on the market now that are cosmetically elegant. So you can get ones that feel like almost like fluid, like water. You can get some that actually feel puffy, kind of like um, a primer that goes under makeup. Um, and you can choose one that works for you. That's great. Well, thank you so much for sharing all of these amazing tips and ingredients to check for. Um, I think it's super helpful for everyone to know. And so uh, really appreciate you taking the time to talk to us. Um, everyone that's watching at home, please check out Cassandra's YouTube channel. It's super informative. The videos are really fun and interesting, and she has a lot of knowledge to share. Um, and don't forget to sign up for the Daily Breather to check your air quality every day. I'm Thank you so that. much. Thanks so much, Jessica. Bye. Talk to you soon. Bye.